So in this video, we're gonna talk about energy. We're gonna start with a simple definition, which it's one of your vocab terms. So you should be able to connect this to your vocabulary for this learning target. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is what is energy? There are lots of different types of energy, but the general definition is it is the ability to change something. And if you look on the front of your student success sheets, you'll see a graphic there that lists out all different types of energy. The main types of energy that we're gonna look at in chemistry are thermal energy and chemical energy. We're also gonna talk just a little bit about nuclear energy, but that's not gonna happen in this video. In this one, we're gonna focus specifically on thermal and chemical. Now, our general units for energy are joules, J-O-U-L-E-S, not the joules like you might see in jewelry. Okay, the symbol for joules is a capital J. You'll often see this as kilojoules, which is a lowercase k, capital J. Another unit for energy that you might be a little bit more familiar with in your everyday lives are calories. So if you think about your packages of food and on the back it lists calories, that calories is a measure of um, energy, the amount of energy that's gonna come from that food. We are gonna primarily use joules or in some instances kilojoules. So those are the types of units that you're gonna see. Now we're gonna split apart here and we're gonna talk about our two different types. We're gonna talk about thermal and then we're gonna talk about chemical. Okay, so if we start with thermal energy, Thermal energy, we're gonna abbreviate in this class with a capital E for energy, and then a subscript of TH to represent thermal. So that's just telling us that there's a specific type of energy that we're looking at, and it's thermal energy. Now, thermal energy, you might also be more familiar with it, with the word heat. Okay, so when we think about things getting hotter or colder, we're looking at the changes in the amounts of thermal energy for that substance. So when we're talking about what it does to our particles, thermal energy affects the speed of the particles. So this is something you might be familiar with from your other classes. If you have things that are hot, they move fast. It's because they have a lot of thermal energy. When things get cold, they're losing thermal energy and so they're going to slow down. So when we talk about how thermal energy affects substances, we're looking at what states of matter or what phase they're in in their phase changes. So anytime that we're talking about things like solids, liquids, gases, we're talking about the phase changes like melting or freezing, um, evaporating, condensing, um, sublimation or deposition, those are all things dealing with changes in thermal energy. So when we talk about examples of thermal energy or what thermal energy can do, it's anything that's affecting the speed of the particles. So we're looking at hot versus cold, where hot things have a lot of thermal energy and cold things have less thermal energy. And those are going to affect our states of matter. So those are our things like solids, liquids, gases and it's gonna affect our phase changes. And our phase changes are all those changes between states of matter. So going between a solid and a liquid is freezing or melting, going between a liquid and a gas is evaporating or condensing, going between solid directly to or from gas is sublimation or deposition depending on the direction. So all of those changes are all going back to thermal energy. It's all relating to how fast those particles are moving. The faster they're moving, the more spread apart they're gonna be because they can't form those connections between the particles. The colder they are, the less thermal energy they have, the slower they're gonna move, they're gonna be closer together and form those more condensed states of matter. Okay, so now we're gonna switch and we're gonna talk about chemical energy. 
So the symbol that we're going to use for chemical energy is going to be similar to our thermal energy. We're going to use a capital E with a subscript CH. Something else you might see sometimes, um, especially if you're reading from other sources about chemical energy, you might see the word enthalpy. And enthalpy is often with the symbol H, or if you're looking at changes in enthalpy, you'll see delta H. Okay, so those are some other symbols that you might see related to chemical energy, especially if you're looking at other resources, other um, pieces of information, if you're looking things up on the internet, if you're looking in textbooks, things like that. These are other common things that you'll see related to chemical energy. Now, chemical energy um, compared to thermal energy is not about the speed, it's about the chemical bonds. Okay, so when it comes to our particles, chemical energy is related to the bonds between atoms to form compounds. Now, we're most often going to be looking at covalent compounds, so we're going to be looking at covalent bonds, so bonds between hydrogens and carbons and oxygens, nitrogens, um, all of those things have energy in those bonds. Now, when we talk about chemical energy, we have to think about whether we're breaking those bonds or whether we're forming them, because they two do different things. So in order to break a chemical bond, you have to put energy in, okay? So it requires energy to break chemical bonds. So breaking bonds requires energy. Okay, you can think about this. Um, one of the best examples I have is magnets. So if you have two really strong magnets, they have a really strong bond, it's gonna be really hard to pull them apart. It's gonna take a lot of energy to pull those two things apart. Or if you think about two things being actually connected to each other, it's gonna require energy. You need energy in order to pull them apart. Take the cap on my marker. These are connected so we can pretend that they're bonded. It takes energy for me to pull them apart. Okay, so that's just like breaking any sort of chemical bonds. The opposite happens when you form chemical bonds. So forming bonds releases energy. So when two things come together, energy is gonna come out. And when we look at the overall chemical reaction, we're comparing how many bonds are breaking versus how many bonds are forming. And that's something that we're gonna talk about later, <coughs> excuse me, when we do actual calculations with this. We're gonna compare, we needed this amount of energy to break all these bonds. We got this amount of energy when we formed those bonds. So what's the difference between the two? And that difference is what determines an overall reaction, how much energy we have to put in or get out of that reaction. Okay, so the main thing to take away from here is that to break bonds, you're going to require energy. To form bonds, you're going to release energy. Okay, so in both of these situations, we've talked about energy changing, whether it's energy going in or coming out. So that's the last thing that we need to talk about is how energy is transferred. So when we talk about energy movement or energy flow, Energy is always gonna flow from high to low. So if you're comparing two things, two substances, two areas, two materials, whatever it is, if you're comparing two things, energy is always gonna flow from the substance with the most energy to the least energy. So energy is always gonna move from high to low. Similar if you think back to um, Biology, you might have talked about diffusion or concentrations moving either across cell membranes or within a liquid. Things always move from high concentration to low concentration. Same thing with energy. It's always going to move from high to low so that they balance things out. And typically the way that this happens is through collisions. So the types of energy that we're looking at, in order for that energy to be transferred from either a particle with more energy to less energy, um, collisions have to happen, okay? They have to be able to touch in order to transfer that energy. So when we're talking about method of transfer, we're talking about particle collisions.
Okay, so whether it's a chemical reaction and different compounds have to hit each other to either break or form bonds to transfer that energy wherever it's going, whether it's thermal energy, things have to collide between high energy and low energy in order to transfer that energy from high to low, no matter what, particles have to collide in order to transfer those energies. Now, when we talk about this transfer, we're gonna go back and we're gonna use some of our terms we've used before with system and surroundings. So remember when we talked about the law of conservation of mass, we have our system, which is the thing that we're looking at, and then we have our surroundings, which is the part that's outside. Okay, so I have two diagrams here because we're gonna talk about two situations. No matter what, our surroundings are still the outside and what's in my circle is my system. So that's what I'm looking at, okay? Together, our system and surroundings make up our universe. So how we define our system, just like law of conservation of mass, is gonna determine how we're looking at energy flow. Okay, so there's two ways that we look at energy flow. It's not only from, so it's always gonna be from high to low, but whether that energy high to low means going into or out of the system has its own terms. So anytime energy goes from the surroundings into our system, so that means our surroundings have the high energy and our systems have the low energy, we call this endothermic. Okay, so anytime it's transferring from the systems into the, or from the surroundings into the system, so our surroundings are the high energy, our system is the low energy, we call that an endothermic process. The opposite, so going from our system, so if our system is our high and our surroundings is our low, anytime we're going from our system to our surroundings, we call that exothermic. So endothermic is energy going from the surroundings into the system. Exothermic is our energy going from our system into the surroundings. The way I like to remember this is endo is entering and exo is exiting. Okay, so we're talking about how that energy is moving. So if energy is entering the system, it's endothermic. If energy is exiting the system, it's exothermic. So we're gonna go into more details about the calculations and the nature of all of these in later objectives, but this kind of gives you a general overview of what energy is and the two forms that we're gonna look at in this chemistry class specifically.